Hello and welcome back to this uh, second part of the tutorial for Unit 3011. Just a quick reminder that this unit is all about the principles, uh, the skills required and the impact of coaching and mentoring. My name is Brent, Brent Warren, and I'm the training director and one of the tutors at CMBD. So by now, uh, let's assume that you've got task one sorted and out of the way and under your belt and let's move on to the other tasks in the assignment. Now this is where things get slightly weird and slightly confusing when you look at the assignment brief and the syllabus good practice guidance. In the first video we looked at task 1 which was pretty straightforward. We've got 1.1 followed by 1.2 followed by 1.3 and then 1.4. And we talked about grouping uh, a couple of the questions together to give the answers. Now when we look at task 2, it starts with 2.1, which you'd expect logically to be followed by 2.2, but it isn't. It's followed by 3.1. And 2.2 and 2.3 occur later on in the assignment brief under different tasks. Then when we have a look at the syllabus, um, the world seems to have gone back to normal. You know, things are in the right numerical order. But this, of course, doesn't match the assignment brief. Further confusion can be caused by the fact that the assignment brief seems to only have four tasks. Whereas the syllabus appears to have five learning outcomes or tasks. However, when you go back to the assignment brief and you look at task 4 there, it does actually contain all the points in learning outcomes 4 and 5 in the syllabus. Well, I hope that's clarified some of that. I mean, it was as clear as mud to me the first time I looked at it, so uh, hopefully I've been able to show you through it. But I think when we get into the individual tasks, um, you'll see how it all comes together. I think the simplest thing to do is to recognise that there's five learning outcomes in the syllabus, but actually there's four task headings in the assignment brief. So let's start by looking at task two. So a couple of things to take on board before we start writing. Uh, the first is the notes on the assignment brief at the top of task two. It says discuss different communication skills required of a coach and a mentor differentiating between the skills required as appropriate and using examples of situations to illustrate your answer. And the second thing to note is the guideline word count of 4 to 450 words. Now this is another one of these questions where you could uh, take the approach of combining AC 2.1 and AC 3.1 when you construct your answer. We've got an interesting command verb here. We've got the discuss command verb. So it's worth going and having a look at the command verb definitions and reminding ourselves that to discuss is to give a detailed account, including a range of views or opinions, which include contrasting perspectives. When we come to a, a range of opinions, you might have your opinion. You might have an opinion from a, a colleague or another manager or you might have the opinion of one of the theorists or developers of the models. Perspectives, you could consider the perspective of the coachee or the mentee, or the coach or the mentor. Uh, you could consider the perspective of the organisation, of the manager, and of course, your own perspective. So we can see from that that the command verb uh, is quite influential in how we're going to format and structure and approach our answer. Now the next thing we need to do is go and look at the good practice guidance in the syllabus for 2.1 and 3.1. They're obviously separated by a fair amount of space, so just bear that in mind. Now let's start by having a look at the uh, notes for 2.1, and they're quite prescriptive as to what they want you to be writing about. They're saying things like you may wish to consider how you create the environment and conditions for people to feel comfortable. Uh, there's four... Uh, Points there, questioning skills, listening skills, body language, tone of voice. Um, you may wish to provide examples of good questions. <laughs> Always makes me chuckle that one because they do want you to provide some examples of good questions. 
and uh, they say it may be useful to consider the impact of communication by looking at a thing called the May Rabian model. That's the model that shows the impact of content, speech, body language on an individual. So you need to go and uh, do a little bit of reading on that one. Moving on to the uh, notes on 3.1, um, you may wish to consider the skills required of a coach and determine if the same skills are required of a mentor, um, etc. You could achieve this by providing examples. Rough translation, you will achieve this by providing examples. So, by the time we've taken on board the instructions from the assignment brief and we've read all those points in the good practice guidance in the syllabus, um, four to 450 words uh, doesn't seem like enough. Well, you are allowed a little bit of leeway, remember, so if you need a few more, that's fine. Uh, make use of cutting and pasting in diagrams of models um, to save word count. And be realistic about the number of examples and uh, the number of references that you need to make. Now, let's move on to task three and let's start by looking at the uh, quite a lot of information on the assignment brief. Um, we start with describe why the skills and qualities required of a coach and mentor include the need to respect confidentiality. We're asked to give some examples and explain what might happen if this is not taken care of. And specifically, identify three different methods of providing feedback and support to coaches and mentees in, in the appropriate section in the answer. Now, you might not believe this, but, you know, very often I'm giving feedback to people doing this assignment to say you've actually only given two examples of how you're going to give feedback, which is a simple fail. So that, you know, really reinforces the need to properly read all the instructions that you're given. We do, of course, then need to go and read the appropriate good practice notes uh, for each of the ACs. And I'm not going to go through those individually because by now you should have become fairly um, used to doing that. This is another one of those tasks where combining some of the ACs is pretty obviously the right way to go. Um, they're, they're indicating it in the guidance on the assignment brief where they're talking about skills and qualities required of a coach and a mentor, for example. That they're bringing them together. So I would be putting 2.2 and 3.2 together and I'd be putting 2.3 and 3.3 together to make my answering a little easier. This is another one where we've got a 400 to 450 word count, which is pretty tight. Um, but, you know, I've given tips uh, earlier on how to make the best of those words. OK, so let's move on to the final task four in the assignment brief, which I'll remind you covers learning outcomes four and five in the good practice guide in the syllabus. Well, I said earlier I wasn't going to refer to the good practice guidance in detail for the previous task, but I am going to point out a few things for this one. So now let's move on to task four in the assignment brief, which I'll remind you covers learning outcomes four and five in the syllabus good practice notes. It's perhaps not immediately uh, obvious how to structure the answer to this. I mean, for example, I could choose to take 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and then 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. So I end up with two sections to my answer. I could perhaps decide, having read the guidance notes at the top of task four, there are three of them. Identify the benefits of having coaching and mentoring strategies, etc., Second one, identify how the adoption of coaching and mentoring strategies can benefit, etc. And the last one, your answer should include identification of how coaching and mentoring policy, etc. So I could possibly split my answer up into three sections covering each of those. Now, having just said I wasn't going to look at the good practice guidance in detail for task three, uh, I am going to point out a, a couple of important points for learning outcomes number four and five in the syllabus. In both of those paragraphs for four and five, it makes mention of a template for a specific bit of the answer. Uh, in the learning outcome number four, you may wish to develop a template to highlight the benefits of coaching covering the individual team and organisation. And then again, we're back in learning outcome number five too. You may want to develop a template to demonstrate the benefits of mentoring to an individual team and organisation. So with the references to the two templates, uh, I personally would go down the route of having a two-part answer, 
the first part covering learning outcome number four, uh, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and the second part to my answer covering learning outcome number five, which is 5.1, 5.2 and 5.3. I also need to be mindful of the comments made in the good practice guide and also the three areas that we need to explore in the assignment brief notes. It's definitely one of these that becomes a lot easier once you get going and once you've developed those couple of little templates, uh, almost like a grid showing the various benefits to team, individual, organisation, for etc. It tends to fall into place. Again, really tight word count. So if you can do those grids uh, and cheat and take snapshots of them and paste them in so they don't show up in your word count, um, it, the, the suggestion didn't come from me. So that's it. That concludes the uh, two video tutorials covering 3011. Um, I hope you found it interesting. I hope it's uh, made a few things clearer. And once again, thank you for listening.